If you're interested in learning a little bit more about the giant sand dunes of New Zealand, stick around and I'll share a little bit of the uh, experience we had and a little bit of extra information. It wasn't too long ago that I found out that New Zealand had giant sand dunes and uh, my wife and I decided that we would take a trip up to the northern tip of New Zealand to see them for ourselves. Right alongside the sand dunes there's a natural stream which also acts as a road which will lead you out onto the northern end of the well-known 90 mile beach. The giant sand dunes are known as the Tapaki sand dunes and they are located at the northern tip of the North Island of New Zealand. We decided to start our trip in Auckland which is about a six and a half hour drive uh, depending on how much traffic there is on the route and also how much roadworks there are. If you do decide to check out the sand dunes for yourself, there are a number of attractions in the area, but I would say that the main activity must be the sandboarding. There are bodyboards available for hire and uh, you can also bring your own. And I'll post a few links in the description of places uh, where you'd be able to hire boards to ride the dunes. The Tapaki sand dunes are quite vast and they cover an area of approximately 10 square kilometers. As I mentioned earlier, the Tapaki stream runs along the side of the sand dunes and it will give you access onto 90 Mile Beach. It is recommended that if you are going to drive through the stream on your own that you do use a 4x4 as you could quite easily get stuck. If you're going to be driving along the stream, please remember to be considerate uh, of others and also obey the rules and the speed limits in the stream. Alternatively, if you decide that you're not going to be driving out in your own vehicle along the stream to get out onto the beach, you could also book a tour and experience the drive as a passenger on a tour bus. So I'll also be putting a few links in the description uh, of the available tours that you could find. When driving along the Tsupaki stream and out onto 90 Mile Beach, always remember to check the tides as you don't want to enter the beach at high tide. It is always recommended to go approximately two hours before low tide uh, and two hours after low tide preferably before low tide because that's also while the tide is still going out. I found it quite interesting that 90 mile beach is considered a legal highway in New Zealand and has a speed limit of 100 kilometers an hour. Even though its name is 90 mile beach is oddly only 88 kilometers long and uh, Rapiro beach which is slightly further south is actually the longest drivable uh, beach highway in New Zealand measuring uh, 107 kilometers long. Once you've spent a bit of time exploring the sand dunes, the Cape Riange Lighthouse is another activity I'd recommend in the area. The lighthouse was built in 1941 and is only an 18 minute drive further north from the Tapaki sand dunes. According to the Maori belief, uh, Cape Riange is the point where the spirits of the dead leave the island and enter the underworld. Even though the Cape Riange Lighthouse is the uh, most northern lighthouse in New Zealand, the Serval Cliffs of the Northern Cape are the furthest northern point of New Zealand at approximately three kilometers further than uh, Cape Rianga. We decided to take our dog Luna with on this trip, so that meant that we had to camp at dog-friendly campsites. The Waitangi Campground is a fantastic uh, site, which I would definitely recommend. The campground is near the location where the tree of Waitangi was signed. However, you will not be able to take a dog with you to the treaty grounds. So if you'd like to visit the treaty grounds, you'd need to make another plan. While we were still camping at the uh, Waitangi campground, we also went for a visit to uh, Kirikiri, where we uh, stopped at the Kororipo Heritage Park, which is another site of cultural and uh, historical significance in New Zealand and it's also where some of the earliest meetings between uh, Maori and European settlers took place. On the last evening of the trip it was only Luna and myself as Lorraine had to continue on to work so we decided to sleep in the chimney in a paddock which was uh, at the Tapua Reserve campground. There wasn't many people staying nearby so it did feel quite isolated but uh, at the same time also very peaceful. If you do decide to stay here, there are long drops available and it is also a dog friendly site that you're able to camp in. Sleeping in the chimney was quite a squeeze, but uh, it is definitely an option because the seats do fold flat. I'd recommend getting a small sleeping bag or a self-inflatable mattress. Uh, initially, Luna did try to take up most of the space, but uh, eventually she settled in the corner and we were able to stay the night in the car before heading back to Auckland the next morning. Oh dear, she's getting a little bit heavy now. 
So this was our first camping trip with uh, Luna, as I mentioned earlier. And I'd like to say thank you to everyone for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, definitely um, give it a like. And if you'd like to see any more Jimny videos or camping videos in New Zealand, give the video a uh, sorry, give the channel a subscribe, and then we'll see you in some of the later videos. See you next time. <laughs> going to sleep already. I know we're going in the car, so you want to sleep already. Okay, so put you down.